Hey guys, what's going on? It's Gail right here back on the 59 channel and today we're going to be talking about Princess Connect. Uh it's global launch that's going to be coming sometime in early 2021, we think in Feb or March. And of course, today with me uh to talk about the release and the ramifications and some of the news that has been coming out for it and the amazing advertisement job that Crunchyroll is doing. Shocker, I must say. Um is our resident ex uh, gacha expert, Nolar. Say hello. Hey guys, I am here with Gail, and it's uh, kind of been interesting. I literally just started playing the game today, uh, even though it's been soft launched in global for a couple weeks now, I want to say. Um, I think it's been over a month, I want to oh, say, okay. because I've I've hit, I think I've hit on my account that I'm on, I think I've hit a month and a half, a month and like five days or something like that in terms of my login bonus. So it has been nearly a couple of weeks now. Okay, yeah, so it's been a bit, but... Uh, Hey, I'm enjoying it so far, so I'm excited to talk to you guys about the game and, you know, explain really what there is all uh, about the game. Yeah, no, so for sure. So basically for a idea on what Precone is or Princess Connect, it is an original IP completely developed for the game itself. Um, a a well-known developer or, uh, you know, of a game called Dragalia Lost, Psy Games has been uh, helming this. Of course, they've done Dragalia Lost, uh, Grand Blue Fantasy. I almost forgot what Grand Blue Fantasy was. And uh, <laughs> this is their third iteration, I think. This is the third game, I think, in their series because I think Dragalia Lost did come before uh, Princess Connect. I yep. could be wrong on that. I think my dates are a bit off on it. I think um, this launched sometime in 2018, whereas Dragalia was late 2017, I want to say, or mid 2017. Yeah. So. Of course, this is a big, big game in Japan. It's nearly been three years since its launch, and it's taken its time to come over on the global side. Of course, uh, Grand Blue Fantasy, for those of you who don't know, has an integrated English version in its in its game. Pretty much, you can switch language from Japanese to English. Mm -hmm. Dragalia had a simultaneous launch. This game, however, took its own sweet time um, to release over on the global version. And in that span, they have had a anime. They ha they have a manga series or manga publication going on right now. So it took its time to come out and obviously, as I mentioned, it just got its anime, I think sometime in the last year, I think it was the summer season of 2020 or last year's summer. I could be wrong. Somebody can correct me on that in the comment section, but they just had a, a 13 episode season a few months back or a year ago. And that popularity was quite astonishing. A lot of people did watch it from what I know, and a lot of people did love the show. And here we are. The global launch has been officially announced and yeah, of course, as mentioned, it's only in its soft launch right now, so not a lot is going on. There's no events available in the game, and it's very bare bones, but you can do a lot of the story. There's guilds available in the game right now. There's PvP. Well, not necessarily PvP. Um, Nolar, you might know what I mean when the, when it's like sort of like semi-PvP, where it's like yeah. technically you're facing another player, but it's technically AI, not an actual player sort of thing, right? Um, right. So it's pretty straightforward in that sense. What do you think about that sort of PvP? Do you think, like, do you enjoy that sort of PvP or would you have preferred it to being a proper, like, PvP for, uh, for the game? Well, when you're talking about live-action PvP, I think of Legends, um, even though it's a different yeah. style of game where you are uh, connected to each person. Um, mm -hmm. This might be a little too much for that. Um, you know, th this style of semi-pseudo-PvP, I guess is the best way to put it, where... You put up your team and then you just fight the CPU version of that team or whatever. Um, it's it's a staple in a lot of hero collector games and turn-based gotchas. Yep. So I am not surprised that they went with that route because if you were going to do live uh, form PvP, there's going to be server issues, ping issues, um, and then if people are using modified APKs or whatever to try and cheat and whatnot, it might not look very good. Um, for It might not have a good experience for your player base. So that's where... I'm not upset about the pseudo PvP, but I, I also recognize that uh, people want some like real time arena or something along those lines. And uh, mm -hmm. that has, again, a slew of issues that come with it. Yep. Um, personally, I haven't gotten to that point, but there's two types of arenas right now. There's the battle arena, which is the normal PvP. And then there's the princess arena, which you can unlock at 815. I personally haven't reached that point yet because I've been treating this game as sort of like a casual game where it's like a pick up and play. I can pick it up like 
right before I sleep or after I wake up for logging in and quickly doing some stuff and then hopping back out. So I haven't necessarily gone through the entire story because the story, I will be honest and say, at a point it does get a bit tricky where even manually or even while using the auto of the game, it can be a bit difficult. So you have to kind of let yourself progress through because the way you level up characters in this game isn't necessarily the way you would in other games. Some games do this sort of mechanic where it scales off your level. So if you are level 55, the max your character can get to is level 55. It's a very similar system in here. Uh, plus you have to build up uh, equipment and rank it up and then, you know, refine the gear and so on and so forth. So it's a bit, I wouldn't say complicated, but uh, per se, but it's a lot of things to consider and work around leveling up skills, equipment, as well as just making sure you level up your characters as you yourself rank up in terms of your player level. Right. The next uh thing well, I just wanted to, uh, for, to get people an understanding of what the, the game is, more or less. Um, mm -hmm. It's very similar to, like, uh, uh, Marvel Future... Uh, not Future Fight. Uh, Marvel Strike Force or Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes, where you're collecting heroes, and then they are... It's a gear-based system where you have yeah. six slots, and then as you get the gear from farming the stories or from whatever the drops are... You, you mm -hmm. rank up their gear and then you rank up in level in that regard. Um, there's a lot of ways. I mean, we're gonna, I think we're going to talk about the, the game here in itself where you've got skills which need to be leveled up according to your ranking. Because, um, like, let's say I'm rank 15. Well, the maximum level my characters could be is level 15, which means the maximum level their skills could be is 15, which means, you know, yeah. so you there's a progression. The progression is somewhat tied to your grinding your character, your rank yourself as the player. Um, which mm -hmm. then leads and feeds into your your own individual characters. I don't know. I'm not very familiar with the IP at all. So uh, all this stuff is new to me. But the mechanics is very similar to like Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes, Marvel Strike Force, like Disney um, Battle Sorcerer Arena. Like it's very similar in that regard. Yeah. Um, no, for sure. Um, before we go into the characters themselves and the gacha system and everything, because I think they're, they're all very interrelated because of the way the system works, because the way the dupe system also works is very fascinating. Um, we'll talk about guilds a bit. It's not very much developed right now. You can pretty much create a guild. It's a 30-man guild. You can recruit people, stuff like that, disband and whatnot, the usual stuff. But... There is also going to be guild battles or clan battles, as it says in the guild section or the guild page. We still don't know what it entails. Obviously, if you've played the J one has played the JP version, you probably know, of course. Um, but there is going to be clan battles, which is super, super exciting for me personally, because again, for me, I, I prefer to have co-op in gacha games more than PvP itself. And this is somewhat of a mesh of both, so I'm fine with that kind of still, even though it kind of makes me a bit hypocritical. But, you know, that's besides the point, of course. Um, now let's move on to the gacha system. This is where things get a bit tricky for a lot of people, because even I took a bit to understand it, quite frankly speaking. So, straightforward. To do a multi, it costs 1,500 gems or in-game currency, which is jewels. The draw rates for a 3-star is 2.5%, 18% for a 2-star, and 79.5% for a 1-star. Let's talk about the rates first. Nolar, what do you feel about the rates in itself? Do you think those are good rates? Do you think those are okay rates? What What are your thoughts on it? Um, Look, if you're pulling a full character, and it's 2.5% for 3-star, seems okay slash maybe a little low uh, the, the standard mm -hmm. rate for the highest rarity for a gotcha is usually three percent right mm -hmm. um yep. you're looking at uh grand cross a bunch of other games just three percent standard now you're not talking like dokkan or any of those other games where it's five percent ten percent whatever those are a little more skewed um those are the exception more than the norm so 2.5 percent seems a little low but i think you'll explain it um once you fully pull a character if you pull a character again, the dupes kind of go into another system. So why don't you go ahead and explain yes. that? So the currency that it becomes is called divine amulets. Now, divine amulets are basically sort of this general currency where if you go into the shop, you can buy memory shards. Now, memory shards are basically shards for the characters. You, you need a certain amount to ascend them to the next star effectively. So it costs 30 from one star to two star and then 100 from two star to three star and so on and so forth. 
Now, if you don't want to work on a certain character, you by all means cannot effectively is what the game's telling you. So if you pull, say, a, a one star, you get one divine amulet. If you pull a two star, it's 10. And if it's three star, I think it's 50. So basically what it's saying, like, okay, if you don't want to spend on a character, you can effectively, or if you don't want to do part of character, we're giving you these divine amulets and you can pump it into your three stars or two stars instead of your one star, right? And then on yeah. top of that, if you go into your hard quest, so basically there's normal quests, which is the normal difficulty, and then there's hard difficulty. If you go into the hard difficulty, you can farm these memory shards of these characters as well. You can go into the dungeon uh, game mode, which is basically like sort of a... I guess the best way to explain it is sort of like Battlefield, I guess, or the rush mode in Legends, I would say, okay. I think is the best way to put it. So you basically use a certain team and they progress through and their HP maintains in each fight. So you have to kind of micromanage your team, make sure they have enough HP towards the end of the uh, floor slash dungeon. And you get dungeon coins for that. You can spend those dungeon coins for more memory shards. Similarly, Arena also does give you um coins as well which allows you to buy more memory shards and equipments as well so there are a lot of ways to get memory shards just not via dupes as well so it's pretty universal the idea for divine amulets right now from what i've been told and been explained to is that you should save it up for time limited units and you know uh seasonal units because they won't come back or they won't be available in the shop like other units will so that's the key of uh you know saving up your memory shards as well and your divine amulets basically yeah um let me just jump in real quick again this yep, reminds me exactly it. like marvel strike force star wars galaxy of heroes this is a shard based system so you'll pull the unit at whatever rarity it is but you're going to be using farming um some mm -hmm. currencies to and further go from one star two star three star i think the maximum is five yeah uh, um so you know, so for example, in Star Marvel Star Force, which I play quite a bot, uh, quite a lot, mm -hmm. it, to go from a five, four star to a five star, it costs 130 shards. From a five star to six, it's 200, and then from six to seven, it's three, 300. Um, so it's the same concept where once you pull the unit, you're just pulling for shards, and at that point, don't worry about pulling for dupes. You know what I mean? Um, you'll just yeah. want to be farming them or using in the game in-game currency you can get to get those extra shards. And the beautiful mm -hmm. part is if you get something like uh if you don't want to focus on a one star and you want to focus on this you know natural three star to get them to five you can use the currency like the memorial shards that you were talking about um to to do that that's very different compared to star wars galaxy of heroes and marvel strike force where they force you to go all the way to seven before that currency excess shards become currency that you can use to feed other stuff you know so yeah here it's a little a little more free to play friendly i want to say or just more of a better system in overall but yeah it, it's an interesting way to go about it because a lot of people don't like shard system they just like to pull the character yeah. and then be done with it um yeah. but but the way they've implemented so far i mean i've been playing for one day and what you're describing it's a better system than all the more predatory games that just like oh well you gotta pull on the you gotta pull on this banner and you're gonna get six shards when you need 300 you're like okay come yes. on <laughs> so no i agree yeah <laughs> so that that's a this overall just the gotcha is a little different and it's a shard based system but it's a little bit better than anything else i've seen so far so there's a point up for that no for sure um one thing i will say as well though currently in the game for the soft launch of course it's only five stars but i do know on the jp version that they've been giving six stars to some some units not all units have six stars awakenings yet but some do so it's at least uh pretty much you can get a bit of a head start i mean that's the whole point of a soft launch is to get a head start for some people um over others pretty much um but yeah that's for the future of course six stars is i even i'm not sure how much of a difference they make i know some six stars have been like s tier or ss tier in tier list that i've seen so it does seem like the six star awakenings that they do give these characters make a difference which is nice you know sometimes uh, games do like to uh, quote unquote buff up a unit after you know a couple of years after their launch you know dokkan right, and ezas right. legends and senkai i think this is somewhat of a similar fashion where it's like oh you can go even further beyond uh because they're such an old unit and they're actually usable again you know after such a long time so that's good at least you know doesn't invalidate a character if you've worked on it to get it to five star and stuff so inevitably they'll be usable again basically is what i'm trying to say here 
Um, in terms of farming gems right now, um, I mean, the best way to do it was via quest because as we've mentioned, the soft launch is available right now, but as it is a soft launch, there's absolutely no events going on right now. It is completely bare bones. It's just the game in itself. Um, so the only ways to farm gems is pretty much do arena. So do your PVP stuff, uh, do the main quests and the dungeon stuff really realistically that's about it and log in of course but yeah it's it's very bare bones to get gems right now the idea uh, is to just do a couple of multis and then hightail it out of there save your gems for like time limited units or seasonal units instead of uh, just you know dumping all of it into the beginner banner because it's not really that worth it the the banner that's live currently right now in Precone is kind of like i would i want to say sort of like a permanent banner yeah so yep. it's something that's going to be present all of for the near foreseeable future unless they decide to update it or something like that right um okay so now comes on to the point is would anybody be willing to jump in in terms of like without any knowledge and is it good for people to jump in i think so yes as i said it's a very pick up and play gotcha game you don't have to like put all your focus into it i mean so far nolar how have you been feeling about that yeah i mean literally just maybe spent two hours today uh, and I'm, I'm playing it now um it's it's pretty good i mean it's the thing about side games is you look at grand blue fantasy you look at this game um they're very story driven so um if you don't know then they're usually original ips right i think all three games right dragalia lost grand blue and this is all original ips even though yeah grand blue's got you know other games but the first one was the mobile game the i mean the uh uh web app game um so here like it, it's pretty well developed in the sense that the you do the quests you know you do your stages three star then move on to the next one but they have cutscenes for like story uh, story sessions for you to just if you want to learn about the story of stuff and the, they they kind of make it really good with the progression so for example there's one system we didn't talk about which is bonds um and as yes. you use a unit in the store in a any events right you just use stamina or whatever they gain a bond and as you the bond grows stronger you uh, unlock other skills but on top of that you unlock other stories so you get to know these characters on a more personal level so whether you know you you like you know the aesthetics of a character or you like their backstory something will draw you in and i mean the art style in general is pretty good in the sense to me i hate chibi chibi stuff and this yeah. <laughs> looks pretty chibi but it's like the heads are proportionate to their body like they're tiny people like tiny uh outlines um yeah. shout out to sly but anyways um <laughs> yeah like so no. i think the art side uh, the art style is really cute and i think mm -hmm. um it's something that you know i could play and, and like you said it's just like a pick up and play you play like 15 20 minutes um you know at, at a time um except for obviously the beginning but uh once you get into your daily groove it's not necessarily what i would call a main game at least right now yeah because um, mm -hmm. there's not a lot to do, but um, right now it just seems like a nice little side game for you to play around with 15-20 uh, minutes a day. No, for sure. And I, of course, like you mentioned, the cutscenes do include like anime style yep. like tra uh, footage and stuff. It's not like uh, just text and whatnot. It's actual like animated stuff. So it's really, really good. I'm looking forward to seeing the events as well when they do it because I'm, I know for a fact that there are events. So like their extra stories that may not have aired in the anime or manga or even part of the main storyline it's just alternate universe stuff so it's going to be super exciting now i mentioned something at the start of the uh, video is that of course we have been seeing a lot of promotion from crunchyroll and i'd say arguably one of the biggest coups they've done or one of the biggest like moves i've seen any company do in terms of collabing with anything since i think azure lane did with hollow life jp is that Princess Connect does have a collaboration going on with Hololive E. And now, for the most part, what we do know is that they are going to be doing special streams, uh, special previews and stuff like that, streaming the live launch and or, or streaming the launch live, I should say, uh, when it officially launches and whatnot. But there also is obviously the ramifications of it possibly also leading to in-game characters for those Hololive, you know, the Hololive VTubers. So... You could see somebody like Gorgura or uh, Ina or uh, Morio Kali being part of the game. And these, obviously, these guys, uh, these girls and VTubers as a whole have been massively, massively popular. I mean, 
they have been the rave in the last six months of like i would say this pandemic season i should say and you know a lot of people have been watching them now and to get them to promote your game is in my opinion massive what do you feel about this nolar oh, look uh, i'll be honest i'm not a vtuber fan well, not because i don't like them i just it's i haven't got into that world and i'm kind of scared to get into that world <laughs> but um yeah no that's massively huge because the vtuber scene is is very big it's growing um and this style of game really lends itself to cross and over and collab with someone who wants to play the vtuber thing it's like they'll go they'll say how cute it is or how you know whatever whatever the case may be it, it, it's the right demographic so in terms of the marketing I, like you said it's a shock that crunchyroll has decided to you know put some time and effort into marketing their games because their games are usually well made and well developed and they just don't see a huge following but here is a big bang to get off the start and uh i'm also con considering what to see what they're going to do with like potentially crossover units like of those vtubers in the game i'm sure there's going to be yeah. some cutscenes, some really nice animated stories to follow it up and yeah i'm just uh, uh i think this is a big deal for princess connect because uh they need to hit the ground running and that's like the big the best way they could get started for sure. I mean, plus you have to remember this game is three years old now, so it's obviously got a head start on JP and to get a new player base and a fan base in glo on global, it's not going to be the easiest of tasks. It's kind of like, this is, I would say, a, a bit of a worse FGO because FGO is like two years of a difference between the global yeah. version or the NA version and the JP version. This is three years, so to be able to intrigue people, they have to pull off stuff like this, so I'm looking forward to it as well. Um, as mentioned, you know, this is a shocker to see Crunchyroll do this sort of a, le uh, you know, this level of a uh, advertisement because I, I know the feeling from Don Machi, Memoria Freeze, when they didn't do absolutely nothing. They did nothing with that game and it was so disappointing because Don Machi was my per is a personal favorite franchise for me, but that's besides the point. Um, I'm pretty sure it's Psy Games kind of like pushing them and saying like, please promote, please promote, please promote. <laughs> yeah. So like it's good to see that side games at least has some degree of control which means that at least you know it, it, at least it's not going to be a i hate to say a konosuba and nexon situation most likely and that's good in my opinion because those yep. two are these two games are very similar in their own right and we can see how one game is going to be possibly treated whereas one game is already being treated fantastically you know yep so yep. um yeah we'll see how it goes any final thoughts before we wrap up nolar no, I mean, you guys have seen just with the soft launch stuff, um, you know, the game looks really good. Um, I'm kind of excited for it. I, again, I know nothing about the IP, but I'm, I'm drawn in right now. And I, I'm really excited to see where the official launch. The thing is, you said maybe February, March. I think it could be sooner because if you do a soft mm -hmm. launch, you really are like right on the precipice of going. So it realistically could be anywhere from like, like as soon as the end of january um True. so with that mentioned i mean be on the lookout for us we'll be probably playing it and i'm sure a lot of the gotcha gamers on youtube will be covering it as well so yeah guys look forward to it yep uh with that being said leave it down in the comments below what do you guys think of the game itself whatever you've seen right now whatever we've said if you have done your own research hey let us know um with that being said leave a like and subscribe our social links will be down in the description below as nolar mentioned we'll hopefully try and cover this on the channel a bit more when it does officially drop maybe create uh, maybe do some you, you know twitch streams on launch maybe have a, a, a summon stream maybe on launch if there's actually a hall a, a, a hall alive uh, collaboration or something hey that would be fun to summon on i mean i have yep. a lot of gems saved up already so that's gonna be fun but yeah thank you all so much for watching it's been Gail and Nalar. We'll see you guys next time. Peace out, everybody. Yeah.